Let's continue talking about research methods. And we left off. I gave you a detailed list of uh, the information you need to collect while you're doing your research, uh, not just for your bibliographies, but so that um, I imagine you'll be doing, hopefully you'll be doing enough research where you'll be able to pick and choose what is your best research to use within your speech. So let's look at this. So how do we evaluate the credibility of a source? Well, one way to evaluate the credibility of a source, and let's just look at testimony, is does it have fact, right? So things that are written, people that are reporting, um, is, the, is what's being said, does it have, is it factual? Can you prove it? Can someone else prove it? Um, is the person, if we're looking at expert testimony, um, this is one type of, of particular source. If we're looking at expert testimony, can, um, is that person talking about direct experience? Did they do, see it for themselves or is it secondhand? Um, does that testimony match a consensus of what people are saying? Think about the various ways that um, things are getting recorded nowadays and put on YouTube or posted on, on social media. And you have to know that uh, they always say that pictures don't lie, but whoever is doing the recording, there is a point of view. And someone else who's in a different place in that situation might, ha might have a different point of view than the person who's doing the recording point of view. So does, is there consensus about what happened? Does everyone feel the same way about it? Um, has the evidence been documented? So whatever that expert testimony is, has it been documented and is it relevant? And is it from a recent event? So recency is also really important when you're considering the source. Is it recent? Has it happened, uh, especially when it comes to testimony, is it recent? Because testimony from, if someone's gonna talk about something that happened a long time ago, memory is a weird thing and we don't always remember things uh, actually the way it happened. Always remember with testimony as well, it's coming through a human being and we all have lenses in which we look at the world, right? I've talked about this in when I talked about audience analysis. So myself as a white female in her fifties, right? I was born in the late sixties. So I have a particular way of seeing the world that someone who's a Latina man who grew up in, who was born in the late nineties, his particular worldview is going to be different than mine. So that worldview shapes what we talk about, what we see and how we talk about it. Always keep that in mind. We're evaluating the credibility of a source. It doesn't mean what they're saying isn't true. It just means that those things go into how we see things. Okay, written documents. So looking at, uh, stick to things that are informational in nature, academic, scholarly. Uh, the B is in a scholarly uh, publication, but it is informational in nature. Um, you should also consider whatever newspaper you're looking at oftentimes reflects the political culture or environment or community from which that particular newspaper comes from. Um, I can't say if this has always been true, but it's certainly been true for the last 20 plus years and that the B is on the conservative side and you can determine those things on your own by looking at the articles that are reflected on the front page of the B or, or what's written in the B, what the concerns or the, the concerns or issues in the B and whether they cover things. Usually it's conservative, but you it's less likely you're going to see things of a, um, more progressive nature, probably not covered in the Fresno B. You're more likely to find that in the Los Angeles Times, or you might find that in the New York Times, or you might find that in the, but you're not gonna, Sacramento B is also on, it's more in the middle, but it's more conservative than the LA Times. So knowing that, uh, even though we say journalism shouldn't be political, but knowing that will help you then determine the credibility of how or the, even the way something is being proposed. Stay away from entertainment magazines. They're not factual, generally speaking. They're there for entertainment. They're not to tell the truth. Uh, considering, um, you know, a popular professional audience versus a popular audience. So 
who's the audience of that written document. Everything is written for an audience. Scholarly journals are written both for the student and for the scholar. Okay. Uh, Rolling Stone magazine, they're, it's written for music lovers, but probably of a certain age too. Right? I know about Rolling Stone. I've been reading it for a long time and they cover a wide range of musicians, right? Uh, Cosmopolitan is written for a particular type of woman. Esquire magazine written for a particular type of man. Um, Ladies Home Journal, I don't know, different magazines. Uh, teen, I don't even know if they have teen magazines anymore. They used to have a magazine called Seventeen. I don't know if they still have it. So is who's the audience? Think about who the audience. The Fresno Bee is written for the Fresno Bee, for people that live in Fresno. You're not going to find many things in the Fresno Bee that are international in nature. It's pretty much focused on the community, the Central Valley community. Are they peer reviewed? You can assume that all newspapers are quote peer reviewed, meaning they have an editor and editor decides what articles are going to get in there. Here's the also th other thing about why we should trust newspapers to some extent is because the people who write for newspapers have been educated people. They have gone through college. They have a minimal uh, de bachelor's degree or they have tons of experience writing. They have one or the other. So they're credentialed people, they're professional people. They've been hired out of like a plethora of other uh, of applicants to be a reporter. So either they have, they, they, have, they can have both, both the experience as well as a degree in journalism. And so these are people that have knowledge and are, that are, um, have been what we consider to be worthy, credible people. They're using their brains. They've been taught how to use their brains. They went to college. They're educated people. So here's a checklist that I always like to use for any kind of research, whether it's whether you're looking at testimony, because it's kind of referenced when I talked about expert testimony, is um, what is their expertise in this? What's the expertise? Is it should we be looking at an article now? And let's say the New York Times reports on agriculture in the Central Valley. The New York Times can report on that. In fact, the New York Times, because the level of the New York Times, that might be a worthy uh, place to look if you're looking for information, but you're not likely to find the New York Times is more New York in nature, more national in nature, and more international in nature. So you're going to find mostly those kinds of things in the New York Times. But the LA Times, you're going to find stuff about the Central Valley. In the Fresno Bee, you're definitely going to be, the whole conversation is about the people of the Central Valley. So they have expertise. They live in Fresno. People writing for the Bee live in Fresno. They've got firsthand experience. Remember I talked about that? Do they have direct experience? Do they know what it's like? Yes, they do. They live here. They know how the beat, what the heartbeat of the Valley feels like. Objectivity. Can you sense an objectivity? Are they reporting the facts? Is their article full of opinions? Opinions are, this is the way it is without backing it up with anything, or they're assigning value. When you make value statements, that comes from an opinion, whether something's good or bad, right or wrong. Those are value statements. That's not objective. When you're reporting the facts and giving the information, you're allowing people to figure out for themselves what that is. Certainly in all newspaper articles, they put the information in a certain way. So you understand it in a certain way, but they're still they're Hopefully they're still reporting the facts. Um, observational ca capacity I've kind of referenced that already. Do they have direct hand experience with that? And how recent is that information? Is it from something that, um, why do we want recent? Because things are changing so quickly, especially when this speech you're going to be working on is a social issue. Social issues are constantly moving forward. We're working on, I mean, think about the movement, Black Lives Matter movement, and think about what is being reported about uh, people's understanding of racism today versus people. And you wouldn't know this if you're really, if you're 20, but if you're 30, okay, if you're a little older, or if you've been studying this, if you look back 20 years ago, people's understanding of racism is not the same understanding of racism or even bigotry or 
let's take a big example is um, homophobia. People's acceptance of the LGBTQ community today is completely different than it was, say, 20 years ago. Completely different. So that's why recency, knowing social issues, it changes over time and it's constantly changing. So you want the most up-to-date, most recent information that you can find to back up your speech and to add flavor to your speech. Okay. Here's a couple samples of credible resources, New York Times, LA Times, National Newspaper. I'm going to say the Fresno Bee, NPR means National Public Radio. The BBC is actually uh, a British, it's a British broadcast company. That's what I think it means, British broadcast company. And anything like that uh, generally is they're pretty neutral in their opinions about things. Peer reviewed articles. And then if you're going to look on the net, .gov, .edu, those are trustworthy places where you can find factual information. Now, what you want to avoid is .com, and I think .org is okay in most cases. I don't want to say you can't use any kind of websites because sometimes it's relevant. Let's say you're going to give a speech on the rise of cancer in the Central Valley and your speech is about cancer and you're going to consult the Mayo Clinic, which has all kinds of information about cancer, uh, on the net. So you're going to cite that you got that information. Maybe you're explaining a certain type of cancer like lung cancer or whatever cancer is on the rise in the valley. And you're using the Mayo Clinic as like defining what cancer is. That's cool. Okay. That, that whole website is devoted to cancer. It's an expert in cancer. So if you pick websites like that, that will work. But if you just pick like blogs are not considered credible sources, why? It's a person's opinion. And I'll say this, if you have any questions about what you think is a credible source, ask me first, okay? Just ask me before you use it. Okay, that is gonna conclude our talk about uh, research methods. In my next, I'm going to do a little troubleshooting on how you get on the internet and go to the library database and how you can use that and see if I can make a video about that. I'd like to show you guys that. Okay, I'll see you later. And of course, always ask me if you have any questions. Okay, bye.